With uh, Longer and Follis, I think we'll be uh, quietly confident. Number 38, another of the Italian team is Magda Genuin. What about her chances? I think Genuin has a good chance here of the, in the overall tour. She's a good sprinter. She can handle the distance. It'll be interesting to see how, uh, how she's attacked this start. It'll give us an idea, I think, of how Follis is going to uh, match up at the 1.4. Well, the other, the other problem that they have, Mike, with such an intense racing period is staying healthy. No one seems to have managed that in the UK without racing. It's, uh, you know, and, and with, with the athletes all living together, very close quarters, if, if one of them gets a bug, they all tend to go down. And it's interesting to see that the rich, the rich teams are capable of, as soon as someone looks as though they're going down with something, they're moved out to a different hotel. I think that is so true, you have to isolate. This is a big turning point in the race, Patrick. Look at the snow. This is going to slow the better athletes down. Just that little factor of new snow on the track, it will make a difference of, uh, well, possibly up to three seconds. Well, this is uh, Genuin with the slowest line round the S-Bends that we've seen so far. Slightly uh, surprised at that, especially with these snow conditions. Must have slowed down a little. I think she must have been practicing and training and found it uncomfortably fast, but uh, she's been caught out. Ridquist now for Sweden, coming up to 1.4, and this is respectable. Saarinen's 3.35. Saarinen leading in the finish area on 6.46. She's going to be outside, but it's... Uh, not a bad run from Ridquist. Oh, you can see how much this is hurting. She's, she, she, her mind is telling her, you've just got to push for another 20 metres to the top of this rise. That's the pain part. Then you get some recovery. 6.9 behind, though. Osterberg for Norway from uh, Jurvik, just outside Oslo. And 6.56, uh, well, that's not bad. Gives her a good start in the pursuit tomorrow. It's going to be a very tight start. But do remember, those bonus seconds are vital. The 15-second bonus at the start of tomorrow's uh, pursuit. 10 kilometers for the women, classic style. And, uh, of course, 15 kilometers for the men. And it's how they do today. They'll be starting in reverse order or winning order. It goes first. Now we're starting to get amongst the top seeds. This is Martha Christofferson. She's followed by Masako Ishida of Japan and then Vesna Fabian from Slovenia. Still a while to go before the best of the season get underway. And uh, really, it's time to uh, put your money on the table, Mike, and tell us who, who is going to be contending for the victory come the final day of the Tour de Ski as we watch Stephanie Bowler finish her run. Well, a good run there from Bowler, but 4.2, it's going to be so close. I think, Patrick, I think uh, Justina Kowalczuk is going to be such a tough athlete to beat. Uh, she is so strong, and when it comes to the final climb, I'm quite sure if she's within a minute of another athlete, let's say she has a bad tour leading into the final day, she just has the ability to push through any pain barrier. She's incredible. Yeah, she's very, very good on that final climb. We saw that last year, and uh, I think uh, everyone will know that they need a minute and a half lead on Kowalczyk at the start of the final day, and that applies to Kala as well. But Madic for me, uh, is, is, is another very strong contender. I know she's not so good in, the, in this, the freestyle technique. She's a great specialist in classic. I think she could match up. She's been preparing for this. Well, I, I, I would put my money on the fact that Magic could not hold on to Kowalczyk on the final day. Simple as that. She will lose two, two and a half minutes to uh, Kowalczyk on the final day. I was going to say she'd need at least a minute 15, but, yeah. uh, well, it's, it's a tough call. Well, stick with us throughout the next 10 days, and we'll find out who comes out on top. But uh, still some way to go here in the prologue. Now, Valentina Shevchenko, not a sprinter by any stretch of the imagination. Brilliant distance skier, but uh, some would say past her prime. But uh, that's a pretty rapid start from her. I like the start. Uh, you, and you often see the intent that an athlete is going to finish. You see their intent after 100 metres. And uh, Shevchenko had a huge intent there to put this, to make this a good one. Fabian, I believe in Fabian. She. She's good over the shorter distances, 1.2. Can she reach out to 2.8? Well, she's off the pace already. Yeah, still no change at the intermediate time. You can see that uh, Anna Kaiser Saarinen of Finland is leading the way. 
and uh, they're finding that time pretty hard to match but already the snow is starting to take effect look at that she's some 17 seconds outside five or six second margin we could have accepted but 17 seconds is telling us already that the tracks are getting slower it without a doubt it seems that way you can see the snow falling Ridkvist there just exhausted uh, after 2.8 on the limit all the way around this 2.8 kilometers and you have to be, you have to bring every particle of uh, force out of these muscles. Well, it's not the first time that the snow conditions have uh, affected the outcome of a race, I guess most famously uh, with Lars Berger in the 15 kilometer World Championships where he came through to win ahead of all the cross country skiers. The Norwegian biathlete struck lucky on that day. It was a phenomenal ski from him, but uh, the, the snow conditions did put five or six of the world's best out of action. Christofferson, 644, 45, and still a couple of meters to go. Competitive. Well, this is looking good for Saren, and I think, and mentioning the, the main threat to take the overall tour in 10 days' time, Saren, for me, having missed the first couple of World Cup races, sometimes uh, when you miss that, your season starts badly. She's regrouped, her injury in her shoulder is now better, and for me, she looked excellent today. Well, there's Kicking Randall, and uh, for those of you that have followed the tour over the years, you'll know that the Americans haven't been around. She is entering the Tour de Ski for the first time. Extraordinary odds on Kicking Randall today to win uh, this prologue. It could be a little bit of a surprise for the bookies. Well, that's strange, yes. Uh, Kicking Randall, an out and out sprinter. Maybe the distance is too far, but I think she had something like 150 to 1 odds. Uh, so clearly, uh, somebody knows something. Maybe she's had the ill health over the Christmas. I heard she's fine, actually. Well, it'll be interesting to see. She's not She's not got lucky with the uh, weather conditions. As you can see, Zelna now struggling to stay with the pace of Saarinen, and the, the, the margins have gone from three or four seconds to uh, 15, 16, 17. And so uh, the uh, chances of Jakobsen taking the lead at the halfway stage are pretty slim. The snow still coming down. It's very fine grains, and uh, they can be a real problem. I love this technique uh, from Jakobsen, Patrick. She, she leans all the way forward, getting maximum drop through her arms, her body weight, if you like, through the poles onto the edges. So it's a dynamic start. Now you can recover slightly before the flat section through the stadium through the stadium well there'll be some frantic action in the waxing huts at the moment as the technicians try and get the skis prepared for the different conditions that they're now encountering they will have known what was coming look at that Shevchenko 8.1 outside and she's a brilliant climber so uh, even she can't match the speed set by Saarinen early on who struck lucky Saarinen's teammate Rita Lisa Rodman the best of the Finns in the World Cup rankings at the moment and uh, well, a real opportunity for her. So often, Mike, when one of the, the team's main athletes, Koitman, retires, uh, someone else t takes on the responsibility and steps up a level. Do you think uh, that's going to happen to Ropenen? Uh, Ropenen, she's certainly shown in the earlier races this season that she's she's raised her game. And maybe, yeah, she's feeling that the responsibility is now, her, her, now hers as an older athlete in the Finnish team. But the Finns, we saw it at the Olympics, they've got, they've, they quite often have the best skis, the best prepared skis. And I think that helped Sarah and on the on, on the downhill section here today she pulled just a little bit back after the halfway Prashashkova getting closer but still over seven seconds behind the leaders uh, not a bad effort if she can keep the margin to less than 10 I think that will go down as a good day's work with the snow conditions that they're now encountering now Anna Haag of Sweden two Swedes left to go Charlotte Kalla is number 56 and I think that's where most Swedish eyes will be of course Anna Haig is silver medalist in the 15 kilometer pursuit at the Olympics fourth in the 10 kilometer free she had great form for when it mattered most last year yeah four races this year for Anna Haig and a 
think, if my memory serves me right, she's been in the top ten on every single occasion. That's the sort of consistency that stands you in good stead at the end of the year. But really, to be uh, to finish in the top three, you've got to get a couple of victories along the way. You need to pick up those 100 points, don't you? 100 for a win, 80 for second place, 60 for third. You need to be winning some races. Zeller's just, just faded off in the last segment here, Patrick. Yeah, but she was uh, quite a long way outside the pace, not in the top ten at the intermediate stage for Zeller. So, Sarenen's uh, time survives again. A little bit of support for Catherine Zeller, 17.3. She's going to be towards the back of the field. It's almost going to be like a mass start in the uh, pursuit tomorrow because the times are so, so close. And the German team, Patrick, weakened slightly with, uh, well, unfortunately, Sackenbacher being unwell. Her cold did not, uh, well, she hasn't recovered from the cold she picked up, so she didn't even start today. Slightly weakened German team. Yeah, you missed the first race of the Tour de Ski. You missed the whole Tour de Ski. It's uh, a little bit unfortunate and one of the problems with the uh, race program and so many World Cups on offer that uh, it can be very, very damaging. That is a good time, very good time from Jakobsen. Charlotte Caller. Just... Uh, the thing about Charlotte Callis, she, she always looks relaxed, you know, she, she, the nerves are buzzing in her stomach, she, she knows this next seven minutes is going to be tough, very tough, but she keeps composed, she keeps it all within herself. Now, Rokinen, has she been inspired by the performance of her teammate Saarinen, who's clocked 3.35? I like this, uh, Patrick. She's uh, still getting good power through the legs, the arms and legs combined. Maybe, maybe her teammate will be dropped down. Oh, I don't think so. She's still got a little way to go under the banner at 3.22. Keep an eye on that uh, because we'll... Uh... Oh, it's close, very, very close. Oh, 1.2, 1.2, but that is close enough if she's got some coaches on the course who can pass on the information that doesn't seem to be. This is where you need them, Mike, right at the top of the hill, just to give you energy for the second half of the course. But once she hears she's only a second down on the lead, I think we'll see a step up again. Now we go with Yulia Shikalova, best-ranked Russian in the World Cup standings at the moment. And Chicago, the line ninth overall. Best result of the season was in Kusumo, where she finished fourth in the individual. But that was classic style. And I think if you look down her career, uh, the classic is where she's marginally better. Fifty Anna Hag. As I mentioned, Charlotte Caller going off 56, so uh, exactly three minutes behind. Just make uh, a quick correction, uh, as you'll remember from last year, the uh, intervals switching from 30 seconds to a minute, hence uh, that's why we're not seeing quite so many uh, finishing in the space of a minute at the moment. And uh, some good performances uh, coming in. That's very good from Latin Maki of Finland. The snow has eased off and uh, already the speed has picked up again. So it was those in the middle order, those who started from 30 through to 35, 40, who have uh, missed out on a real opportunity. The black bib belonging to the winner of this event last year. It is, of course, Petra Madic. And uh, she surprised us all with a victory in this race, but uh, she won't catch us out this year because everyone, everyone keeping a close eye on her. Well, her coach, even Hudak, uh, said that they were preparing so meticulously over the, this final two weeks leading into the Tour, she wants to win it this year. I, I was surprised last year she won this time trial, uh, Patrick, because she's not an out-and-out -out skater, but it shows that she can, on her good day, put it together, like Jakobsen. Now, Jakobsen, just outside at the halfway stage, has gone into the lead with a brilliant finish. Great racing from Astrid Jakobsen. 2.5 the margin. Saarinen finally is pushed down into second place. And uh, the time is now down to 6.43.8 for the 2.8 kilometres. And still, we're waiting for the start of uh, the, the tour favourite, certainly the tour favourite, Justina Kowalczyk, looking as relaxed as ever. Now, you don't need to be told who this is. Teresa Young. 
show how phenomenal tempo that she races with. And she's one of those that will give 100% every time she puts the race skis on. Well, I was about to say about 20 seconds ago that the snow has bagged off, but it's still well and truly falling heavily. Yeah, she's a little bit down on Ropenen's time, Mike, who was only just outside Saarinen at the split time. So I think she may find herself two or three seconds down on the leaders. A little bit more, 4.5. Oh, she's a real fighter, though. Dude. She's attacked this hill, giving everything to the high point, telling herself that she has to do that before the first of the recovery segments. This looks very good from Rita Lisa Ropenen. She knows that she was only 1.2 off the leading time going through the halfway stage of the race with a big climb completed. Looks to have stepped up.